Hello and welcome to Flippin' Through, the internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. And today we're flipping through Mad Magazine number 502, released January 2010, $5.99, which is indeed cheap. But before we do that, hey, I'm back. Uh, first video in a couple weeks. I just moved. This is the new studio. Super excited. It's echoey. It's this horrible green color. I didn't paint it that. That's actually uh, how it came. The house. The house I bought is somebody chose this color. I don't know. I can't explain it. Anyway, um, if you want to support this channel, please remember hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. That is the best way to support this channel and to help it grow. And I can't do it without your support. So please consider doing that. If you want to help me in another way, uh, patreon.com slash flipping through. What do you get? You get a six out of stickers. I got some buttons somewhere. I don't know. I've lost everything in the move, um, except my mad magazines. Thank goodness. Um, we'll go check it out. Patreon.com slash flipping through. If you think this is worth anything more than a like and a subscribe and a comment, these are the people who I get to thank for their support. Now, Reflection of Perfection, Misimo, Tom Richmond, David Strickler, Megan McInerney, Shane Buckley, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Rob Wilson, Rod Meadsbury, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Ory, and Little Cozy Nostril. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope I can keep on earning it with that. We're back. Ah, oh, damn it. I guess it's fitting that, you know, I move into this new place, everything's getting set up, and I goof up something that badly. There's a lot of things that I, kinks I gotta work out. I haven't moved my studio, and so things just are sort of behaving differently. Anyway, bear with me. Uh, if things seem really off, leave a comment down below. Oh, and you know it. It is the ad alert season, but I guess that was a little premature. Kingdom Hearts, two, 358 divided by two days? What the hell does that even mean? Anyway, this is um, the Mads 20 Dumbest People, Events, and Things of 2009, an annual event that like the special issue that Mad Magazine would do at the end of the year. Um, this one, look, that's Michael Jackson's glove, but it's a thumbs down. I don't understand. Did something, did Michael Jackson do something weird? Hmm. I guess we'll have to find out. We give thumbs down to Michael Jackson's doctor. Oh, the guy who kills. <laughs> All right. That, there it is. Uh, I guess I found out pretty quickly. Um, Mark Fredrickson was that cover artist. Beautiful. And if you think there was no um, Alfred E. Newman, all of the little rhinestones on this are Alfred E. Newman. So uh, don't worry. A house ad, of course, does not get the ad alert. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, this is actually one of the rare occasions where I'm going through the issue without having looked through it. I stopped doing that. That used to be my MO, but I had to change my method. This time though, I was just kind of so excited. I, I just wanted to get something recorded and say what up to everybody who's out there. Um, here we have the letters in Tomato's department, a case of right and wrong. Me and my best friends at school all read Mad and think it is the best magazine ever. But now they're all starting to think that Mad's letters in Tomato's is fake and Mad makes the letters up. These help me prove them wrong. Ryan Tabor, Patterson, New York. Tabor Tots, if we were making up the letters, don't you think we'd come up with something more interesting than yours? The good news is, you're right, the letters are all real. The bad news, however, is that you're the smartest one in your group of friends. That's just kind of sad. That actually came up in National Lampoon. National Lampoon, that was the first time I had seen the accusation leveled that some of the letters were made up. I have to like add that to my list of questions to ask Dickie D if I ever have the balls to invite him on the show. Here we go, another beautiful uh, house ad. Um, I mean, it's not, it's whatever, you know, who gives a shit? I'm not gonna give it the uh, the alarm. 
Uh, Blight at the Museum 2, the Ojai Valley Museum in Ojai, California. Ottering mad artist Sergio Aragones. And there's this really cool thing um, where it's like a replica, and probably not a replica. It's just like his table and uh, studio. And then he's this giant cutout of him working. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool to have those two, uh, two things mixed in together. Um, you guys, I think I hurt my rotator cuff. Um, that's no joke. I, uh, I can't reach, I can't reach up. Um, anyway, here we have the Fundalini pages. I gotta zoom a little bit. Celebrity cause of death betting odds. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Do you remember those used to be full page things at the end of the magazine? Herman Mejia doing that beautiful artwork for him. Cause of death for Kate Gosselin. Delayed uterus implosion, multiple matricide, rubbed out by insanely jealous Octomon for stealing her thunder. Fa Why would Octomon be... Because didn't sh Kate Gosling come later? Fatal skull fracture after Duck mistakes her ridiculous haircut for the ass of a mallard. Stumbles and falls while dancing with John at 50th anniversary party. Boy, they, they really called that one. They did not make it. That is... Um, that is pretty accurate, but kind of predictable. Here we have the Godfrey Report. This is always done by staff members of Mad Mag, like editorial staff. Um, and uh, this is one of my favorite things. In, crackpots. Five minutes ago, screwballs. Out, kooks. In, bupkiss. Five minutes ago, zilch. Out, diddly squat. In, fops. Five minutes ago, coxcombs, out, pops and popinjays. Are those birds? What the hell? It's probably some weird exotic East Coast bird. That's my guess. We don't have such birds in Minnesota. Um, we're going to keep chugging along because I know if I know anything, it's that I end up talking too much and I have to boogie on through. Um, yeah, clouds in the whole nine yards, but listen, I've got to go. Some bearded guys being a real douche. That's okay. Let's hope so. Um, medical myths you just shouldn't believe. Look at this Tom Bunk, beautiful artwork. You should wait at least, sit, at least an hour after eating before shooting heroin. That actually, I feel like that's kind of a legit one because don't people on heroin vomit sometimes? Um, I almost gave this an ad alert. Uh, many people have the exact same fingerprints, but the authorities claim otherwise in order to discourage crime. Girls can't get pregnant the first, ninth, 17th, and 23rd time they have sex. The gallbladder functions perfectly up to a month after death. And finally, if you shave off all your body hair, it'll grow back thicker and in a totally different color. I remember that myth that it grew back thicker. I remember when I was a kid, uh, like I can barely grow a beard as it is. Um, but I remember like sh starting to shave when I had peach fuzz thinking like, oh, that's it. I'll just cut it all off and then I'll, I'll have a thick beard. Here we have uh, Ice Road Truckers parody. In the summer, the world's most dangerous road is Rocky Road. Soft serve, hard lives. Ice Road Truckers, Sundays at 9 p.m. on the History Channel. You know what, though? They, they, everybody picks on the History Channel. But don't forget, there's a channel called Arts and Entertainment, A&E. And they have just shows about midgets. That's what they do. And fat people. Neither artistic nor, okay, I guess it's entertaining. But not, not the type of entertaining that they were going for when they started the network. I think Bravo used to show, like, plays and stuff like opera i remember um here we have the last thing i gotta keep i gotta keep moving because already nine minutes in make your own best-selling book title he's just not that into a serial killer's key to wealth i don't know it's mid sorry um the mad 20 the dumbest people events and things 2019. 
The canonization, canonization of Michael Jackson, the kids stay out of the picture. Michael Jackson's personal and professional lives were filled with countless peaks and valleys. He was tremendously talented, but also tremendously fucked up. Now, we don't like to speak ill of the dead, but here goes anyway. Jacko was a self-important, over-medicated, emotionally stunted, borderline pedophile who hadn't recorded a good song in 20 years. There, we said it. Now the grieving can begin. This is really cool. I don't know why, but I'm always, I always like the, the well-done drawings that look like stained glass. Um, yeah, people can't decide like whether or not they love Michael Jackson or hate him, right? It's like, first he was a pedophile, then it's like, he dies and everybody doesn't mind him anymore. Then a movie comes out, then everybody hates him again. It's just like, I don't know. I just don't think about him. That's what I mostly do, is just not think about Michael Jackson or any famous person. Corporate bailouts. You know what? This is Herman Mejia's artwork. Um, I am going to skip this one because it'll get me all riled up and I'll start ranting about some dumb political thing that nobody wants to hear about anyway. Uh, here we have John and Kate plus eight, the parent crap. It was a charade, it was a sham, it was a ruse. It was season five of John and Kate plus eight. This season we learned that when your marriage is crumbling and your family is in danger of falling apart, the best thing to do is keep those cameras rolling and act like nothing's wrong. To be fair, lots of couples going through a divorce will put on a brave face for the ones they love. It's just that, in this case, the loved ones were the network and their sponsors. We hope John and Kate made a lot of dough this season, because the cost of eight child therapists is really going to add up. Jeez, yeah, I never thought about that part of it. It's like, it's got to be hard to have eight kids. It's got to be hard to grow up with seven siblings that are exactly the same age as you. But then to have your whole life on camera, oh, that'd be miserable. Not your whole life, but significant portions of your life. Here we have uh, Henry Gates arrested in his own home. Beer and loathing. I don't remember this. Dixter, the return of America's favorite cereal water border. Okay, I'm going to read this one. Uh... Former Vice President Dick Cheney could be enjoying an idyllic retirement, hunting, killing and gutting his prey in his native Wyoming. Instead, the most secretive veep in history is now on TV, more than Law & Order reruns. Worse, all he talks about is his apparent love of bloodshed, torture, and violence, executive assassination squads, his statement that Guantanamo is a first-class program, his defense of waterboarding and enhanced interrogation techniques, this guy has more blood on his hands than a hemophiliac juggling razor blades since he likes being on TV so much. Maybe he's even angling for his own series. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess, like, depending on what your stated objective of Guantanamo is, Guantanamo could very well be a first-class program. So maybe it's achieving exactly the goal that they want it to. Um, angry town hall meetings. Well, here we have mad money. <laughs> um, I wonder if this is going to be, well, this is just James, John, what is this, James Kramer? Jim Kramer, um, who's just like this guy who doesn't really know, he just gets it wrong a lot with money. But, you know, I, I think probably a lot of people get it wrong with money. It's just that when they get it right, it outweighs all the times they got it wrong financially. Um, Oh, caught with his worldwide pants down. Stupid, stupid human twists. That's very funny. Bill Clinton had been revered as the king of cigar-smoking, smarmy, two-timing weasels. Thanks to David Letterman, he finally had some competition. When a CBS producer tried shaking Dave down for a cool two million bucks to keep quiet about some creepy affairs, Dave ran to the cops and the rest is history. And about six months worth of monologue material for Jay, Conan, Jimmy, Craig, and Dave himself. The whole sordid tale stinks worse than the potato salad at Rupert Lee's Hello Deli. When I was a kid, okay, first off, love uh, David Letterman. He was clearly the best out of all of them. I would say, well, maybe not Conan. Because Conan was like, anyway, I love David uh, Letterman. That's who I watched most when I was a kid. And uh, 
I visited, I, when I went to New York City as a kid, I visited Rupert's Deli and I got a picture with Rupert. So um, that was pretty cool. I liked that. Um, that's also kind of a baller move to just be like, no, you can't shake me down. I'm just going to come clean about everything. The Octomom. Suleiman Family Circus. Look at this. Who did this? It's kind of a fun take on Bill Keen. Octo Mommy lets the kids draw the strip. Oh my god. That was a pretty sad affair right there. Um, Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme. Um, the number one scam of the year. What does it take to destroy the finances of innocent people and charities? A. Moral bankruptcy. B. Depraved indifference. C. Obscene selfishness. Or D. All of the above. Bernie Madoff is scumbag billionaire. Would be kind of sick to be rich though, wouldn't it? How often do calendars repeat? All right, according to Google, every 28 years they repeat. So this one, you could use it in four years. Wait, 20, like in three years? Because it's about to be 2020, four years? Anyway, in 2028, you could use this. So I hope you didn't throw this issue away. If you did, you're going to feel pretty, pretty, pretty foolish. Glenn Beck, fairly unbalanced. You know what the weirdest thing about... Um, well, let me read this first. Glenn Beck is part pundit, part showman, and part misinformed, fear-mongering, mentally unstable simp. 2010, the word simp was around? I thought that was kind of a newer one. All right, he's a simp. Consider his appearance on the Fox Morning Show where he accused President Obama of having deep-seated hatred of white people. He then immediately did a 180, insisting he's not saying Obama doesn't like white people, and then ended his bizarre diatribe by declaring that Obama is a racist. Despite this compelling evidence, we don't think Beck is crazy. We think he is a conniving self-promoter who will say anything for his own enrichment, with little regard for the consequences of his incendiary rhetoric. And that's just not dumb. That's not just dumb. That's dangerous. The number one Fox News blowhard acts like a lunatic, think like a maniac, using gibberish, paranoia, and racist code to inflame American idiots. Glenn Beck. Glenn, okay, this is the weirdest thing about Glenn Beck. I mean, he, there's a lot of weird things about him. Um, a lot of those Fox guys were all radio dudes, like Glenn Beck, uh, O'Reilly, Hannity. They were radio guys um, who continued doing radio shows along with their evening programs. But this guy, I mean, he did kind of land on his feet after leaving Fox. He started like some internet program that I think is still going. The weirdest thing about him, though, is that he was a Catholic and then he became a Mormon. Anyway, usually it's like, you know, how does that happen? He did it because of a babe. He was chasing a babe. That's why. Uh, here we have, uh, who is this? Rod Blagojevich. I remember this. He was paying people off or trying to get people to pay him so he could appoint them to a Senate seat. Um, let's see. Alaska. Oh, who did this? Campbell. Scott Campbell did this. This is cool. It's like a real DC artist. Um, not to say that mad artists aren't artists, but it's like, you know, it's different. Um, Alaska loses its governor. The flaking of Palin 123. Sarah Palin claims she enjoys going rogue. Apparently rogue is the Eskimo word for stupid. She lamented that many lame duck governors slack off during their last term, only to up and quit during her first term. She slammed David Letterman for joking about her daughter and making light of statutory rape, only to counter his joke by insult insinuating that Letterman himself was a statutory rapist. She challenged the media to stop lying about her, then lied about Obama's health care plan. Now he's in favor of death panels to kill grandma. We wonder if the Eskimos have a word for Dangerously delusional political hack. 
There's a lot to think about that. Uh, here we have Michael Jackson's doctor. Um, was it fentanyl? Is that how he died? A potent anesthetic. I think that's what it was. Anyway. And then Michael Phelps smokes pot. Who cares? Really, who cares about that? 20 plus. 20 mad addenda. More random acts of dumbness. I think this is actually... This is not allowed. This is... I find this offensive because... Um, yeah. It's 20 dumbest. Uh, here we have Monroe. This is Monroe. Uh, Anthony Barbieri was still doing it. Bill, Bill Ray had moved on from doing the art on that one. It's just kind of a hard pill to swallow. We have a beautiful Peter Cooper. Spy versus spy. Take a moment. Read through that. These ones are almost like impossible to do because you've got like... We have to 20 of them. I can't do this in like 25 minutes. Board games, board game based movies will soon be see seeing. Uh, Hi Ho Cheerio, tragic glimpse into the seamy world of Mexican child labor. Young Miguel, stunning newcomer Luis Ramirez, must somehow pick enough fruit from four meager cherry trees to satisfy his domineering field boss, Tito. Played with Veminous Brio by Oscar winner Benicio Del Toro. Can one downtrodden six-year-old overcome hungry crows, harvest-wrecking dogs, and Tito's malicious habit of putting the boy's hard-won cherries back onto the tree? <laughs> uh, filled with both buckets of heartbreak and the sweet juice of hope, Hi-O, Cherry-O, possesses an overwhelming bounty of emotion. And then here we have Mad presents a look at the great... Wait. So this is, came out in 2010. January 2010. Like, probably they made this in like, uh, you know, late 2009. I remember the Great Recession. It sucked, man. That was like, that was really, that was not fun. Especially as like, how old was I? I was young. I was in my 20s or something. I was like 25 years old. I think when this came out. I'm trying to... Just got out of the Navy trying to start my life. Good work. Not fun. Recession. Okay, get that newspaper. I wonder, like, sometimes I think about it now. Now I got a job. I got a good job. It's like I see a lot. Where I live a lot of homeless people. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, the foreclosure man got foreclosed on. That's actually amusing. This guy's flipping burgers. He's like, I'm going to be an architect. Burns his hand. He goes, oh, well, I was a doctor. Oh, no, he goes, I was an architect. I get it. Anyway, probably every... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's that was pretty awesome. That's a that's a hell of a that's a hell of a strip from uh from our guy Sergio Aragones. Um, this is something that I've um enjoyed quite a bit, um, and that is the Mad Vault. Um, I think I've said it not that long ago, but if they start Mad up again, I think doing like a Mad Vault. Uh, Mad Vault thing again uh, would be pretty good. I would like that. Jerry Gersten right here. I love his artwork. So good. Oh! What the hell? There we go. That's right. An ad. I can I count this as an ad too. I hate that. Um, oh my god. Oh my god. There we are again. It's an ad alert, and wait, there's no fold-in? The fold-in was in there. Damn it. We missed it. Um, anyway, you guys, I am so excited to be back. If you watched this whole video, type in the following um, comment. Blow off, duster. <laughs> anyway, 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm glad to be back. I'm, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, let me know if anything's horrible. Is, this, is it as echoey in the video as it is in my ears right now? Um, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. Toodaloo.